My name is Luca Della Santa, and I'm the spearfishing and freediving specialist for Cressy USA. I started spearfishing when I was 18 years old, my freshman year of college. Um, I grew up fishing and surfing, and you know, one of my best friends that I was surfing with was really into spearfishing, was always going out, and so I went and bought a little 50 centimeter gun and a set of fins, and went out with him to our local dive spot on a little shore dive, and I shot a barely legal sheep's head, and I've never been more excited in my life and from that point on I've dedicated my life to you know the ocean and diving and spearfishing and really understanding how all of this works and you know every day and every time I go diving and spearfishing I learn something new and that is what intrigues me and you know keeps me coming back to it. You know started spearfishing in North Carolina which for me is a very special place in my heart. I was born and raised there. I, Basically, that's where my career started. And to me, it's some of the best diving in the world. Some of the, you know, we were located right in the middle of the Northeast, in the Southeast, right in between the tropics and you know, the cold waters of the Northeast. So the amount of diversity in this uh, fish species there is massive. Uh, we get a lot of the, you know, the cold water species from the Northeast pushed down during the winter. And pretty much year round, we get a lot of the tropical species that stick around in especially southeastern North Carolina. Always holds a special place in my heart and then you know Florida is great. Water's always warm, water's always clear, um, you know it's just a hop skip and a jump over the Bahamas which is some of the best diving in the world. My favorite type of spear fishing is uh, probably blue water hunting, wahoo, tuna, stuff like that and the reason is is because it can change in the blink of an eye. You know, some days you go out there in the middle of nowhere, there's really not much around, you don't see much, you're just floating around in the blue, and all of a sudden, you know, you're just surrounded by fish. And it's very calming, it's very relaxing for me, you know, sitting out there in the blue, and you know, just kind of sitting there waiting and thinking and contemplating, and you know, getting ready for that moment. And you know, some days you don't have that moment, and then some days it's the best day of your life. The pure power of those fish and you know the techniques of hunting them is something that is you know untouchable to me. So it's the best day of fishing that I've ever had is an easy one. It was up in North Carolina. We were in the middle of the Riceville Beach Spear Fishing Tournament, which is a local tournament where I'm from. And three, four months earlier, my uh, best friend, the guy who actually got me into spear fishing, had recently passed away. And this was the first tournament that we had done without him, and he passed away diving. You know, it was a tough one to go through for sure. And uh, it was the second day of the tournament, and we were like, you know what, we're gonna go try and do something that probably isn't the smartest, but if it pays off, you know, it's, it's gonna be big. And so we decided to go out to the blue water and look for wahoo and tuna. You know, it wasn't really the best time of year for it, and so we were like, but if we get one, then, you know, it's gonna catapult us up in the tournament. And we got out there, went to the first spot, wasn't that good, and, you know, we got it back up in the boat. We were like, you know what, let's go try one more spot. And so we ran about, you know, 10 more miles, and we pulled back the engines, we're getting our dive gear ready, and I hear my friend, you know, scream, there's a tree floating in the ocean. And for anybody that knows about wahoo diving and blue water diving is that you have something floating in the middle of the ocean, it's usually loaded with fish. And um, we hopped in the water and we were surrounded by not hundreds, but thousands of wahoo. It was a scene that I know I will probably never see again in my life. And most of my friends and most people will never see in their life. And it was about three hours of just nonstop wahoo all around me. And um, you know, that day we managed to land, a lot of us our first Wahoo, or personal best, um, and between five people, we limited it out in three hours, and that was with taking our time. And, you know, that day was really special to us, not only because of what we saw and what we experienced, but, you know, because we had lost our friend earlier that year, and it kind of felt like he had, you know, kind of sent that to us and said, you know, we're. I'm thinking about you, I'm overlooking, I'm looking over you guys and, you know, obviously getting back to the dock, to the weigh-in for the tournament um, with all those Wahoo was, was pretty cool. So that day is definitely going to be a day that I'll never forget and will probably never be topped.
Yeah, diving with sharks is uh, it's interesting. If you're not used to it, it's definitely something that can be uncomfortable. Uh, when I first started spearfishing and diving, you know, I was first time seeing a shark. I definitely freaked out a little bit being in the water with the shark. Um, but you know, my, I was lucky enough to have some of my friends around me that had been doing it for a little bit longer than I had, so they were very comfortable with them. But you know, it's one of those things that you it we're in their environment, so you definitely have to respect them, and they'll respect you. Um, you know, if they they if they start to get a little aggressive with you. You just kind of have to show them that you know, you're not necessarily going to back down um, and you can't run away from them or anything like that. You just, you know, you got to assert your dominance back to them. They're kind of like dogs. Yeah, I mean, it's, you definitely have to read the situation and, you know, feel out what, how the sharks are acting and if they're being aggressive, you can kind of tell. Um, it's definitely one of those things that I don't push if sharks do start to be aggressive or anything like that. You know, we get out of the water, we move spots. It's just not worth it. Um, especially spearfishing, it's, they start to get aggressive. They're going to start going after your fish. It's just like there's no point in you know, diving that spot anymore. But it, sharks are also something that I love to see and I love to interact with because they are part of the food chain and way up in the food chain. And, you know, we're getting into their environment and it's cool to see how they act and interact with us and the environment and being able to see them come in docile and just be checking us out but then also where they can just you know flip a switch and become a little bit more aggressive so it's definitely you know a humbling experience and it's something that you you know respecting sharks and understanding them is very important when you're dealing with them and diving with them. So I love spearfishing uh, because of the, there's a few things, the challenge, you know, the friendships and the people that I've met and, you know, the ability to go harvest my own food. All three of those things made me love spearfishing. I love a challenge. I've always loved fishing and it was always, you know, rod and reel fishing. That's what I grew up doing. And I loved, you know, adrenaline, thrill seeking. And, you know, I was surfing, fishing growing up, and when I found out about freediving, you know, it was just so simple and it was so pure. And then I figured out that, you know, you can grab a spear gun and, you know, go fishing as well. And I, you know, being able to combine those two things that, you know, are really uh, the challenge and being able to fish and get fish as well and, you know, see what lies beneath the surface and being able to see you know different type of structures and species and how fish interact um, and then you know it's just the people that I've met along the way and the opportunities that it's um, brought me it's you know something that's near and dear to my heart and I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon.